Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to our regularly scheduled uh, June 13th uh, meeting of the Haverford Township Board of Commissioners. Um, prior to this meeting uh, at 6.30, we held an executive session to discuss real estate, legal, and personnel matters. Um, and we also met an executive session prior to last week's work session uh, to discuss the same issues, real estate, legal, and personnel. Uh, Mr. Berman, would you call the roll? Commissioner Gondek. Present. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Here. Commissioner McCluskey. Here. Commissioner Cavender. Here. Commissioner Quinn. Here. Commissioner Hart. Here. Commissioner Wexler. Here. Commissioner Trombetta. Here. Commissioner Holmes. Here. Um, if we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and then if I could ask everybody to remain standing. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could just ask for a moment of silence to remember the students and the teachers who lost their lives um, in the shooting in Uvalde, Texas. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, next on our agenda tonight are uh, three proclamations uh, from the township. Uh, our first proclamation addresses our emergency medical services, and I invite uh, Commissioner Hart to uh, proclaim that proclamation. Thank you. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of the emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden death, severe illness, or injury, and whereas emergency medical services has grown to fill a gap by providing important out-of-hospital care, including preventative medicine, CPR education, first aid training, and such, and whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency med medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, educators, administrators, pre-hospital nurses, pre-hospital physicians, rescue technicians, flight paramedics, and flight nurses, and whereas the members of the emergency medical services team engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and accomplishments of emergency medical services providers, now therefore be it proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and Haverford Township community at large wish to thank all EMS members for their selfless service. Proclaim this 13th day of June, 2022, Township of Haverford by C. Lawrence Holmes, President. If I may invite members of the Narberth Ambulance Crew as well as uh, Director McCanns to come forward for a photograph with uh, Commissioner uh, Hart, and uh, in front of all of us on the board. Thank you. Christine is coming. And thank you all for your service. Hi, thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, John, how you doing? Thank you. Yes, it was.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. Got it. I now invite Commissioner Forsty Grupp to uh, read our proclamation for Pride Month. Whereas Haverford Township cherishes the value and dignity of each person and appreciates the importance of equality and freedom, and whereas all people are welcome in Haverford Township to live, work, and play, and every family in whatever configuration deserves a place to call home and feel safe, happy, and supported by friends and neighbors, and whereas Haverford Township denounces invidious prejudice and discrimination based on age, gender identity, gender expression, race, color, religion, marital status, national origin, sexual orientation, or physical attributes as an affront to Haverford's fundamental principles, and whereas Haverford Township appreciates the cultural, civic, and economic contributions of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, plus community, which strengthen our social welfare, and whereas it is imperative that young people in Haverford Township, regardless of sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, feel valued, safe, empowered, and supported by their peers and community leaders, and whereas, despite being marginalized, LGBTQ plus people continue to celebrate authenticity, acceptance, and love, and whereas, Pride Month began in June of 1970 on the one-year anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising in New York City after LGBTQ plus and allied friends rose up and fought against harassment and discrimination at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, and whereas the Stonewall Inn was designated a national monument in 2016 by President Obama, and whereas from the Stonewall riots, sprouted the rainbow flag, also known as the LGBTQ plus flag, that serves as a symbol of hope and inclusion to the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender people in the LGDP, LGBTQ plus movement, and whereas flying the rainbow flag throughout the month of June celebrates and affirms diversity, equity, and inclusion, and whereas the Haverford Township Board of Commissioners established an anti-discrimination policy, Ordinance 2626, Chapter 183, in February of 2011, to ensure that all persons, regardless of a person's sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression, enjoy the full benefits of citizenship and are afforded equal opportunities for employment, housing, commercial property, and the use of public accommodations, and whereas, in January of 2012, the board appointed a seven-member Human Relations Commission to promote equality and to enforce the anti-discrimination policy for the township. Now, there, now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Haverford Township Board of Commissioners recognizes the month of June as LGBTQ plus Pride Month in Haverford, urges our residents to recognize the contributions made by members of the LGBTQ plus community and promotes the principles of equality, liberty, and justice to promote a healthy, safe, and prosperous community for all. And be it further proclaimed that as our message to our own residents as well as people everywhere that Haverford Township still stands as a beacon of equal opportunity for employment, housing, and commercial property and the use of public accommodations, Haverford Township will proudly fly the pride flag for the rest of June and the months of June hereafter, hereby proclaim this 13th day of June, 2022, Township of Haverford by C. Lawrence Holmes. Thank you, Commissioner Forsty Grupp. I now invite Commissioner Quinn uh, to proclaim Juneteenth National Freedom Day.
I'll try to get this done by the end. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike work sessions, there are no time limits here, Mr. Quinn, so you, you take your time. Welcome. Thank you. Most rec rec recognized at, at, or African Amer American ho 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 or ho holiday observance in the, in, in the United States also known as Emancipation Day, Emancipation Cell, Celebrate, Brave, 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 Freedom Day, June, June, Juneteenth, Independence Day, and where, whereas Juneteenth, Nat, 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 well, National Freedom Day, or, or uh, commemorates the uh, survival due to God's given strength and uh, determination of out at, or of African Amer Americans who, who, who were brought to this con con country, stacked in uh, the bottom of slave ships in a month-long journey across the Atlantic o the Ocean, also known as the Middle pa Passage, and approx approximately 11 and one half mil 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 million at av or African Amer 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 or Amer Americans uh, survived the voyage to the new new world the nut um, the, or uh, the number that died is like like is uh, like, likely to uh, be greater than that well only to be subjected to whip, whip the whipping castration cat or a castration castration brand 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 branding rape tearing apart of fat families and forced to submit to slave slavery more for more more than two two hundred years a, after the arrival in uh, the United States, and where whereas Juneteenth uh, or uh, commemorates the day freedom was proclaimed to all slaves in the South by Union General Grant Granger on Juneteenth, eighteen sixty-five, in Gall Gallatin, Te Texas, more than two two, two two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Pro 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 well, 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 proclamation by President Abraham Lincoln for the first time in over 130 years of the annual celebration, Juneteenth has finally been officially recognized as Juneteenth in, well, in, well, in Independence Day in, in America by the pre pre President and con Congress of uh, the United States. And where, whereas the uh, reality is particularly un well underscored by the fact that it was in the first set session of the 105th con 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 Congress via bipartisan uh, co or, or a cooperation among for the, uh, for former con 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 Congresswoman Bar Barbara Rose co Collins Senator Car the Carol Braun, co co or Congressman J. J. C. Watts, House Speaker Newt, Newt Gingrich, King 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 uh, Majority Leader Trent Spot or, or Lot, and Senator uh, or uh, Minority Leader Tom Dat 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 what 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 that 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 the Senate Senate Joint Red 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 Resolution and House Joint Red Red Well Resolution were successful were successfully shepherded through both houses of con con or through both house of con 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 Congress in a successful at at or effort to officially recognize. Juneteenth as in in as independent independence day observance of of or of Amer Americans of a, 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 or of African descent, and where whereas Amer Amer Americans of all co 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 colors, creeds, cult, 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 cultures, religions, and countries of origin share in co common love of a respect for free freedom. As well as deter term 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 determination to to protect their right to freedom through de dem, 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 through de democratic institutions by which the te tenants of freedoms are guaranteed and uh, protect or and uh, protected. 
the 19th of June or Juneteenth independency along with, with um, the 4th of July completes the cycle of freedom for American Independence Day observances. Until all, all are free, none are free, is an off-repeated maximum that can be used to, hi hi to, or, uh, to highlight the significance of the end of, uh, of uh, the era of slave slavery. Whereas the Juneteenth Observance Foundation is is sponsoring the premier celebrate preparation concert worship services and campaign to commemorate America's second Independence Day observance, the 19th of June, as one which completes the cycle of America's 18th century independence movement initiated with the 4th of uh, July, uh, or, or, or 17, 7, 7, 7, or, or 76, dec well, Declaration of Independence, and to re rec 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 recognize the, con 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 the country's move, move or movement towards a one in America advanced by a sincere di the dialogue of, of uh, the realization of what Juneteenth historically means to all Amer Amer Americans, promote, promoting rate, racial hearing, reconciliation, re res or restoration and ju justice or, 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 or uh, throughout the day, and heal, he he healing for uh, the legacy of slavery, slavery, slavery and the nat national Juneteenth Black ho 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 or, or, or ho Holocaust or uh, memorial service. Now, therefore, be proclaimed that the board of commi 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 the board of commissioner commi commissioners of the ta ta township of ha 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 Haverford, Kent County of Del Delaware, com or, or com the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania here hereby adopts the pro proclamation in support of June Juneteenth ha 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 or of, of a June Juneteenth and encourages the, partic the uh, participation of our me 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 members in wa wa Washington uh, and, the U U U U U and the U.S. Capitol during the week of the 19th of June, proclaim this 13th day of June town township of, of ha 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 or Haver Haverford Larry, Larry Holmes president. Mr. Bride, we would like the floor for a moment. It's yours. Ladies and gentlemen of, of Haverford Township, uh, Board of Commissioners and stakeholders, taxpayers and citizens, my name is Rich Bly, I'm chairperson for the JACE, which stands for the Juneteenth Artistic Collaborative Experience of Delco. It's been eight years of campaigning for Juneteenth as a national holiday. It's been three years since we've been successful to bring a continuous celebration at the Delaware County Veterans Memorial. Connor Quinn is my friend. Connor Quinn is my friend. Connor Quinn is my friend. Because when a lot of people told me no, he said yes. And even with his impairment, he said yes. And he understood and he said yes again. So Connor Quinn is my friend. I'm 55 years old. And I'm living long enough to see a dream of my father who served in the United States military who taught me about Juneteenth and the history of myself and who I am. I now can represent myself in truth and in strength and impart to each and every one of you the joys that I know about this great country living here as a foundational black American. I hope that you join with us on June 19th at 9, 9 o'clock a.m. at the Delaware County Veterans Memorial for our program. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> One more thing. 
and I don't do competitions, okay? But here's a flag for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bly, thank you for your words and thank you for your efforts uh, in support uh, of this extraordinary cause. And um, Commissioner Quinn, thank you for your efforts. Um, we will now move on um, to the uh, public participation portion of our meeting. Um, the Citizens Forum has 20 minutes of registered speakers and 20 minutes of speakers on agenda items. Um, I do not have any registered speakers before me this evening, um, so I will go straight to um, inviting members of the audience to speak on agenda items. Um, I will start on uh, the side of the room to my left uh, and invite anybody in the first row. Mr. Devekis, do you have anything to say on the agenda item? You'd have to come up. Um, why don't we turn? Um, Welcome back, Mr. Devakis. It's been a while. Well, welcome to the new home. Hartford Township never looked so good, huh? let me tell you. Thank you. Bill, Larry, I think you guys are the only two left from the original, uh, original crew from 12 years ago when, we first, uh, when I first came to you asking if we could do something about LBGT people here and that we could protect the next generation, the kids. It wasn't about me. It's about our future and where we could take it and how we could take it further and protect more than us, more than just LBGTQ people, but minorities and people that weren't, that didn't just fit the mold. And it was five hard months. I think the chief somewhere in here may remember, we, um, we got hot and heavy for five hard months, and we created, at the time, um, the toughest anti-discrimination law in Pennsylvania. And Larry, with your input, it was the human relations portion of the, and I, I didn't even know what I was doing when I walked in. All I knew was Tyler Clemente was cyberbullied by his roommate and jumped off the George Washington Bridge. And 12 other children in copycat suicides killed themselves because their parents didn't accept them. Uh, one threw himself in front of a moving truck. I couldn't, I could not not say something. So I had to say something. Though things were being said about me, it wasn't about me. It was about the kids. So you put in the human relations part, and I, we, were, uh, we were aboard. I didn't think it was going to happen, but it did. Um, Bill, you were the president of the board. <laughs> he was. What a, what a wonderful player. You really kept it together. Trust me, we could have fell apart but we didn't. And in the end, it was the kids from the high school that came on the final meeting, and I think they're the ones that got us over the line. And the votes came in, and the wall was made, and we had challenges that we had to wait for, but I'm really, really happy that 12 years later, I can come back and say I'm very, very proud of Harford Township. I've only known Haverford Township my whole life. I was, I'm a Haverford Town baby, born and raised on Chestnut Avenue. So I'm very, very proud of, of this town. Thank to, you, Mr. DeVecchio. To come into this building? Oh, boy, it's so nice. <laughs> so you all did good. All right, thank you. Happy Pride. <laughs> thank you, Mr. DeVecchio. Uh, still sticking with the side of the room to my left. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on an agenda item? Yes. You could just let us know your name. Yes, 
My name is Emily Woodward and I live um, on Wynn Avenue. And I just want to um, thank all of you for not only, um, well, all three of the proclamations today. Um, I think that the gratefulness of, for the first responders was important. Um, the Pride Month is very important and I brought one of my favorite books. Um, it's a middle grade book about um, uh, a challenge that happens at um, uh, an elementary school. And if I could read uh, just a few pages, no, just a few paragraphs from it, if that's okay. Certainly. <laughs> um, so this is the teacher uh, talking about the book that's being questioned. Let me say it first tonight. There is nothing inappropriate about being gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender or non-binary or questioning or any other identity within the LGBTQAI spectrum. There is nothing to be ashamed of. There is nothing that being queer that deserves censorship rather than expression. This should not be a matter of debate because a person's humanity should never be a matter of debate. Instead, it is a matter of the highest principle which we can aspire to, which is equality. So I wanna thank you for that. And also um, the third proclamation for Juneteenth. I think that it is amazing. It's long overdue and it's just um, a token of what we could be doing um, and should be doing. So thank you very much. Thank you. And to my left. You could let us know your name. Uh, my name is Lauren Friedman Way, and I live on Belfield Avenue. Um, I want to echo Emily's sentiments about all three proclamations. I think they're all so vital. Um, but I think you can probably tell from my mask which one I'm here to support. Um, EMS. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> um, so the other day, I drove by St. Mary's Church in Ardmore. Um, some of you might belong there. Some of you might have driven by there yourselves. And they have a big banner outside of the church right now um, with a heart on it. And inside the heart is the gay pride flag and the transgender flag. And in huge, bold letters, it says, God is proud of you. Not God loves you, but God is proud of you. And I thought, wow, how affirming is that for all of us? You can, you can love somebody without being proud of them, but you can't be proud of somebody without loving them. And I thought that was just a fantastic message and such a brave, bold statement from a church in our community and in our neighborhood. So taking a page out of St. Mary's book, I hope that Haverford Township can celebrate with our whole community, but also uplift our LGBTQIA folk um, and neighbors and show the vocal minority that Havertown is proud of our diverse community um, and that our unique identities should be honored and affirmed. And that's all I have to say. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody in the back row? Uh, to my right. Is there anybody who'd like to speak? All right. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Anderson. Yes. I just want to stay uh, with that, too. Now, there's somewhere, there may be some, like, pride color gray in here somewhere, but really, it's in my heart, and then give some of my heart to everybody, the LGBT community and everything, especially with all the laws and stuff going on this year, like, we're getting attacked for no good reason at all, and it should just be, if anything, just... Let them be and like them be live their lives and you don't necessarily have to accept them but don't interfere like let them be let them love who they want to love be who they are and that's it thank you thank you mr anderson that concludes our uh, public participation portion of the uh of the agenda we now move to a bureau of fire update uh commissioner wexler Yes, thank you. For the month of May, Bureau of Fires reported they had a total of 105 calls between all five companies. The average personnel per call was 19 firefighters. They committed to, they were, 75 hours were committed to firefighting. Also, 205 hours were dedicated to training. 
All five fire companies participated in the township's Memorial Day service. Eight new members have begun National Firefighting One at the Montgomery County Fire Academy. Two members of the, of the Bureau of Fire have completed an emergency vehicle operations certification course. And four members have completed EMT school. So that's a, that's a good blessing for us, and especially in EMS month as well. So that's, uh, for those that don't know, EMT school is 180 hours. So it's a whole half a year of, of school. So that's on a volunteer basis. So that's to be commended. And that concludes the report for the month of May. Thank you, Commissioner Wexler. Um, we now move to a, the library update. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Mr. President, thank you. I would like to give an update on the Library Association meeting that took place last month on May 18th in the library. This is a, a time when the Board of Trustees of the library reports out to the association and the community about the state of the library. And the president, Phil Goldsmith, said that the state of the library was strong and very excited about the future that uh, we can see on the horizon for the library. I wanted to also observe that the, the Board of Trustees of the library is a seven member board. Four of those members are appointed by the township and three are elected by the association. At a very well attended association meeting, Alice Callison was reelected to serve another, uh, to serve out a three year term. I would also remind everyone that anyone who is a resident of Haverford Township and is over 18 years of age can become an, a member of the Library Association and vote at the association meetings um, that take place in May. Um, Bill Goldsmith, who is president of the Board of Trustees, offered a, a, his president's report and he thanked the commissioners for their diligence and intentions to make sure that we that the library had overturned every possible stone but now we are that the that the library is now moving forward with the renovation at the current location and i quote from his um, report saying that this the the place on mill road is quote a wonderful site strategically located between the high school and the middle school in essence we are part of an educational campus and by adding 5,000 usable square feet, we're expanding our facility by 25%, certainly matching, if not surpassing, the size of other local neighborhood libraries. And yes, we have to add parking, as the zoning board has made clear, and that will be done, end of quote. He did also say that he, that the board and, and the library staff will make sure that during the renovation and construction that the library will continue to support the, to serve the Haverford Township community um, and that they are committed to communicating with all stakeholders, neighbors, patrons, and employees in a timely and forthright manner so that there are no surprises as well as providing a way for you to give suggestions about what this new library might look like. So I would like to end my report and again reiterate that they express their gratitude to the Board of of commissioners for their, their support in the past, their current support, and their future support. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Forsey Grupp. They are most welcome. Uh, we now move to the ta Township Auditor update. All right, well, a lot of big changes since the last time we met. Billy, Joe Girardi's gone, and Phillies are now 500. Yeah. Something, something does not seem right, but I'll take it. Um, but anyways, <clears throat> I have reviewed the uh, expenditures and warrants for this meeting. I found no irregularities, and all my qu uh, questions were uh, answered to my satisfaction. Thank you. Uh, I now turn to our township manager, Mr. Berman, for his update. Commissioners, good evening. It's that time of year, and I'd like to give you a little information about our summer playground camps. As you know, campers attend one of seven different locations in Haverford Township, Coopertown, Grange, Hilltop, Merwood, Veterans, and Westgate. So far this year, we have more than 1,000 families signed up for the programs. 
None of this is very noteworthy, except when you consider that every one of our camp locations is fully booked, except the camp here at Veterans Field. Not only that, but we are seeing numbers at some of these locations that we haven't seen since 2014 or 2015. And most importantly, and I don't want to lose sight of this, it's the first time in three years that we've been able to go into the summer months offering a full slate of programming, including our sports camps, our art and drama programs, cooking and baking classes, all with no COVID restrictions. It's truly going to be a memorable, memorable summer for all of our participants, no matter which program or playground they choose. And so, I just want to offer a very warm and heartfelt thank you to the Hebford Township community for your patience and flexibility over the last three years. I also want to thank Brian Barrett, Eileen Matola, Kirsten Taylor, Jesse Hart, Julian Denny, and our entire Parks and Recreation team for the hard work in making things happen for the last three years and the excitement that we feel going into this summer. It might look that they get paid to have fun, but a lot of hard work goes on behind the scenes. Somehow they do make it look fun. They look after our children, they provide a wide array of programs, and Haverford Township is indeed very fortunate to have such a great parks and recreation program. On another note, um, Commissioner Quinn did a great job with the proclamation earlier, and I must add that Monday, June 20th, we will commemorate Juneteenth, the Day of Freedom, and um, all township offices will be closed and there will be no brush collection on Monday, June 20th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berman. Uh, we move to the approval of minutes. I need a motion to approve the regular meeting I minutes move, of May 9th. I move to approve the re re or regular meet meeting minute minutes of May 9th. So moved by Commissioner Quinn. Uh, second. Do I have a second? Seconded by Commissioner Trombetta. Um, do we have any um, additions, deletions, or uh, amendments to the minutes? Mr. Berman, would you call the roll? Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, we move to the approval of warrants. President motion to approve the following warrant number six, 2022, totaling $6,546,441 10 cents general and sewer fund payroll for May 12th, 2022 in the amount of $700,878 and 46 cents general and sewer fund payroll for May 26th, 2022 in the amount of 1 million 30, $30,493 and 75 cents. General fund disbursement number six, 2022, in the amount of one million three hundred and sixty-seven thousand eight hundred and forty-two dollars and sixty-seven cents. Sewer fund disbursements number six, 2022, in the amount of sixty-seven six hundred and seventy-seven thousand five hundred and forty-five dollars and fifty-seven cents. Community development block grant fund disbursement number six, 2022, in the amount of thirty-three thousand four hundred and twenty-nine dollars and twenty-five cents. Capital Projects Fund Disbursement Number 6, 2022, in the amount of $34,018.09. American Rescue Plan Fund Disbursement Number 6, 2022, in the amount of $44,645.49. Credit Card Statement Ending May 27th, 2022, in the amount of $12,035.07. Uh, thank you, Commissioner McCluskey. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Wexler. Um, are there any uh, additions, changes, or corrections to the warrants? Hearing none, Mr. Township Manager. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next on our agenda, we need to uh, review and approve a non-service civilian disability pension. Mr. President, motion to approve non-service connected civilian disability pension. Second. We have a motion approved and seconded. Uh, this is something that was um, uh, discussed in executive session appropriately. 
um, but uh, action must be taken publicly. Um, is there any comments that are appropriately made now, or can we shall we move directly to the vote? Oh. Oh. We shall move to the vote. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next on our agenda is that I'm on the stipulation of council relating to a tax appeal. Mr. President, motion to approve the settlement and stipulation of council on the matter of Hereford Township School District's tax assessment appeal for property located at 120 West Eagle Road, DC Folio 22030091800, pending in the Court of Common Pleas of Delaware County, number 2020. 009357 and authorize council and proper officers of the board to execute necessary documents. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Quinn. Wexler. Oh, Mr. Wexler. Thank you. Um, so we have a motion and a second. This is approval again, the contents of which are appropriate for executive session, but action must be taken here in public. Mr. Berman, will you call the roll? Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next item on our agenda is a resolution um, designating an agent for the Winfield Drive flood mitigation study. This is the sixth ward, but if somebody would take this for me, I would appreciate it. Uh, Mr. President. Yes. Ms. Governor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 2267 2022 authorizing David R. Berman Township Manager to execute for and in behalf of the Township of Haverford all required forms and documents for the purpose of obtaining financial assistance for the hazard mitigation grant program under the Robert T. Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act. Thank you, Commissioner Cavender. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Forsty Um, Mr. Berman, is this something you want to describe in 20 seconds or less? This is a uh, grant through FEMA, and I am being authorized to sign the grant documents. You have 18 seconds left. Um, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you. Uh, um, if anybody has any questions or comments, uh, please direct them now. Otherwise, let's call the roll. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCloskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Um, next on our agenda is the use of ARPA money for the purchase of uh, several Philips Tempest Pro cardiac defibrillator monitoring systems. I will entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2268-2022 authorizing the use of American Rescue Plan Act for funding the purchase of three Phillips Tempest Pro cardiac defibrillator monitoring systems with the American Rescue Plan Act money in the amount of $157,507.20. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Wexler and a second from uh, Commissioner Hart. Um, this was uh, discussed uh, uh, last week in um, excellent detail by uh, Director McCanns. Um, does any commissioner have any question or comment? Let us go ahead with the vote. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. The next item on our agenda uh, also involves the use of ARPA money to replace the sanitary sewer um, and um, uh, lines on Woodcrest Avenue. Mr. President? Yes. Commissioner like Cavender. to make a motion to adopt Resolution 2269-2022, approving the use of $439,300 plus all applicable engineering and design costs of the township's American Rescue Plan funds for the Woodcrest Avenue Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Commissioner Wexler, so I have a, a motion and a second. Um, this was also discussed last week uh, at our work session um, in significant detail. Do any commissioners have any questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. 
Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next on our agenda is a contract award for the Woodcrest Avenue sanitary sewer replacement. I will entertain a motion. Wait, that's the, the one next I one. Did. We just did that. Did I skip one? Yeah, that we just did. did well, that aren't these two different things? Yes. I yeah, the updated agenda. The uh, the updated agenda includes both the resolution authorizing the money to be used out of the ARPA funds, and the next item that Commissioner Holmes is referring to is the award of the contract. Mr. Right, President. We, uh, yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to award the Woodcrest Avenue Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project to A.J. Jurek, Aston, PA, in the amount of $439,000, submitting the lowest responsible bidder. Do I have a second? Or second. Mr. Wexler. Second, good. Um, thank you. I have a motion and a second. Uh, any questions or comments on the awarding of the Woodcrest Avenue Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project to A.J. Jurek of Aston, Pennsylvania? Hearing none. Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Colleagues, appearing next on our agenda is a contract purchase for uh, an emergency contract to um, uh, relating to selective demolition and removal of the facade. I informed by our township manager um, that that remains in negotiations and there is work to be done and advice to still be uh, rendered by our consultants on this. So I need a motion uh, to um, remove this from the agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion to move and second. Um, I would just call for a voice vote on this. Aye. 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 All in favor, I'm sorry, all in favor of removing the agenda item? Aye. Any nays? Thank you, <clears throat> colleagues. Uh, next, on the agenda, Haverford Township Free Library Boiler. Mr. President. Yes. I motion to award emergency purchase of replacement boiler and burner to be installed at the Haverford Township Free Library to Mechanical Solution Associates Incorporated, Aston, PA, in the amount of $153,005, representing the lowest responsible quote. Second. Uh, I have a motion and a second. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Or Well, uh, first, this was discussed also, um, described uh, in last week's work session. Does any commissioner have a question or comment on this uh, contract? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Within Parks and Recreation, uh, I will now entertain a motion uh, regarding the Grange. Mr. President, a uh, yes. motion to award the following recreation purchases to include the installation of six pickleball courts and repainting two tennis courts at Grange Park. This also includes replacing the fencing around the courts under Sourcewell Cooperative Purchasing Agreement account number 061518-AST from Topper Court, Hatfield, PA, in the amount of $190,960. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Hart. And a second from Commissioner Quinn. Is that correct? Yes. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments on the uh, purchases regarding Grange Park? These were also discussed last week. Uh, Mr. Berman? Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next on our agenda relates to our municipal facilities, a professional energy audit. I will entertain a motion. President, I'll make a motion to enter into a professional energy audit contract with SSM Practical Energy Solutions of Westchester, Pennsylvania, in the amount not to exceed $30,800. Second. I have a motion and a second. Does anyone have any questions or comments? 
Uh, this was also discussed at last week's work session. Uh, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, finally, I have uh, we have a contract to consider regarding Haverford Reserve stormwater basin conversion. I will entertain a motion. Mr. President. Yes, Commissioner Trombetta. I'd like to make a motion to award the Haverford Reserve stormwater basin conversion to Premier Concrete Inc. Broomall PA in the amount of one hundred twenty-eight thousand five hundred dollars, submitting the lowest possible or lowest responsible bid. <laughs> Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, do we have any questions or comments from any commissioners? Mr. Berman? Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point in the meeting, uh, the floor reopens um, as a continuation of the Citizens Forum for any non-agenda item. Is anybody who would like to speak? Um, hearing none, I will move to um, new business. Is there any commissioner who uh, wishes to place new business before this board tonight? Hearing none, I will now move to other business and begin with Mr. Gondek. Uh, I have nothing really to announce. Uh, well, I will bring up one thing uh, just so that the residents of the township know if they haven't already been made aware that the comprehensive plan is currently being discussed uh, and it's being drafted for a review. I believe there was a public meeting on that last Thursday. Uh, if you missed it, it was recorded and you can watch it or download the document online to see what's going on. It's a very important document uh, with regards to the future uh, development of the uh, township, so I do encourage people to be made aware of it. Other than that, I just uh, wish everyone a good beginning to the summer. Thank you, Commissioner Gondek. Uh, Commissioner Forsty Grubb. June is the month of graduation, so I would like to extend congratulations to every person who has graduated from elementary school, middle school, high school, college, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is a huge accomplishment to continue your education and and get that degree in your hand. The other thing I would uh, suggest as a, as a teacher that all those kids who think uh, summer is a time just to kick back and not open a book, I recommend you go to the public library and see what wonderful books are available so that you can not slide back and are ready to keep learning in September. So there's nothing better than a book on the beach. Uh, on behalf of everyone but the children of Haverford Township, thank you for that, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Well, I, I was going to I was going to invite Commissioner Forsty Grubb to uh, give that message to three specific children. Ah, excellent! Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Always we're, we're, the, the tape for they, them. They are all available all week. Perhaps yeah. we can arrange. Yeah, perhaps we can arrange a private audience for that. Commissioner McCluskey, the floor is yours. Um, I, I did want to mention this is our first public voting meeting um, since the shooting in Uvalde and the shooting on South Street. And I know over the weekend there were reports um, that there's 20 senators um, in a bipartisan fashion that have come to some sort of agreement on, on gun control. Um, but I, I, I do, I, I, I guess I'm somewhat hopeful that, um, you know, we won't, won't continue to repeat the cycle and it'll fall out of the news cycle. I feel already like it's already been a couple of weeks and we're moving into summer. Um, so, you know, I'm going to try to be more conscious to, to bring it up more frequently. Um, I just, you know, after after the shooting in Uvalde, I, I, I was speaking to a friend of mine um, who lives here in the township who agrees with pretty much nothing I do uh, on this board. Um, <laughs> And will tell me all the time, but you know, he, he, we ha we had a conversation, and we've known each other long enough, and we we it was there were there were raised voices, but it was both, um, you know, it was just it was just fear. We both have young kids, um, and it there was a feeling of helplessness, and um, I'm gonna, you know, it it was regardless of what 
he or I may believe politically or what we maybe voice our opinions on, I think there's a, there's a shared understanding as a, um, parents of kids of school age of, of just a flat out fear when, when something like that happens. And I think um, it's healthy to hold on to that to make sure something happens because, you know, as, as Deputy Chief Hagan discussed last week, uh, our police department can do everything possible. And you've read reports, um, but it's, and I say this in, in, in no way about the preparation that they've done or anything uh, that our police department or any police department has done. The, the, the reality is these are all, every, every story you read about this is it's, it's split second and it's not on the police. It's on, it's on us as a society to come up with some solution um, to these sorts of problems. So I just want to say it out loud. I don't, I don't have all the answers. I hope this, the, the, the agreement that the senators reached, I, you know, it's, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a first step, um, but it's it's a first step in one. Um, hopefully, it, it it leads to a second step. But that the second step and the third step are going to require us um, to not wait for the next school shooting or next supermarket shooting. It's going to require us to continue to bring this up and uh, continue to try to push um, us as a society to to make changes on, in that regard. Um, and then just next next month in, in another slice of Americana is, is, is the return from of our July 4th celebrations throughout town. Um, there'll be a lot of kids celebrating. There'll be a lot of kids walking in parades. And I hope uh, everybody in township takes a moment and is able to enjoy the, the long weekend and enjoy the slice of Mar Americana that Hereford Township provides. Uh, in, in the third ward, there'll be a parade from the Oakmont Fire Company. Uh, the Merwood Civic Association is going to have uh, their kid parade, bike parade, and, and annual, hasn't been annual because of uh, <laughs> unusual circumstances, but it'll be back this year in terms of the events all day and the barbecue. Um, so I hope everyone has a wonderful summer, um, and I, hopefully we can, uh, we can come together as a society to, uh, so we don't have to keep talking about uh, these types of shootings in schools or supermarkets or other or other situations. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McCluskey. Commissioner Cavender. Thank you. Um, I hope that as many residents as possible were able to make it over to Marion Golf Club for the Curtis Cup match this weekend. Um, it was a beautiful weekend. It really highlighted some of the resources and, and beautiful parts of our township. And I wanted to specifically thank the police department for working overtime all weekend to assist with traffic and um, help make sure residents got where they needed to go, as well as keep the public who were invited to attend. Um, so uh, like Commissioner Forsey Grupp, it is the last week of school in Haverford Township. So thoughts and prayers with all teachers and parents um, <laughs> as we finish up. Uh, my son is going to playground camp uh, next week, so um, those are always really popular in the township. Um, I also want to reiterate uh, that we are having another opportunity to weigh in on the comprehensive plan. That's Thursday, June 23rd. It's the regular meeting of the Planning Commission. They'll be presenting more information on the draft plan. That's an opportunity for residents to weigh in. If you can't attend and you don't have an opportunity to weigh in in another way, you can send an email to Kelly Kirk um, with your comments. So um, along with playground camps, the CREC is celebrating um, its 10th anniversary celebration, June 13th to June 18th. Um, there are free fitness classes, um, free fitness class drop-ins, bring a friend all week. Um, there are several scheduled events. Tomorrow night, there's a 10th anniversary presentation from 6 to 8. There's going to be children's activities at the same time. Um, Wednesday, there's a guided hike and pickleball and volleyball. And Saturday, they're going to have some samples of classes. So. Congratulations to Parks and Rec on a successful 10 years um, with the CREC. So um, I also want to wish everyone a uh, happy July 4th and um, join my colleagues, um, or I guess um, say that I'm proud to be part of a board that um, has now officially recognized Juneteenth. Um, and I think it 
gives us an opportunity to celebrate the freedom of all Americans. And I'm really um, proud that we were ahead of the curve with that, as well as with the Human Relations Commission when that was founded. Um, I think um, I'm proud to be part of the township. Um, I think that's all I have. Um, I think, um, actually, in the sixth ward, we typically have a parade on July 4th. Do. Fifth and sixth. South Harbor so. Butterman Association. Okay, good. So, um, fifth that ward. That ends in the fifth welcome. ward at Elwell. Well, yeah. it ends at, at Elwell. Okay, so, so fifth and sixth ward are having a, it's sort of a kids parade. Everybody rides their bikes, and um, Larry is our MC. So it's a wonderful event. Um, <laughs> yeah, every year I lose. Every year I'll I lose stay hundreds, quiet, quiet on that one. Every, every year I lose <laughs> hundreds of votes to give out three blue ribbons in the bike in the bike decorating contest. I'm still trying to figure out that math. Yeah, you can't win. Just make sure they're in the sixth ward. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all I have. So I wish everybody a happy summer and um, happy last week of school. Thanks. Thank you very much, Commissioner Kevin. Um Yes, Commissioner Quinn. All right. Um, well, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow is Flag Day, so everybody fly their flag proud of and be proud to. And, uh, and also slow down now that all the kids are out, are out, are out of school. Don't ever speed, but try, but try to drive as slow as, as you can. And when you're go, 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 going down my, like my, well, my street, go as slow as, as you can, please. And uh, thank you to all the crossing guards that were out there, and thank thank you to the uh, police too, who who uh, went to all the spots where we didn't have um, stand staffing and stuff. So that was good to see the police every day. And and um, congrats to uh, the grads go they go out and change uh, uh, or, or uh, the world and make this world a, be a better place. So we can turn on other news and hear good news for once. And um, June, June, Juneteenth, thank you guys for allow, allowing me to present that. And every year I will I will present that. And um, it's a it's it's long long it's a long overdue. So thank you to Rich and and his group for all that they they do for uh for uh the air, the area to re 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 or recognize June, June Juneteenth. So thank thanks everybody. Thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Commissioner Hart. Yes, um, the Penfield Civic Association's 4th of July celebration is going to be returning after a several year hiatus. Um, not surprisingly, it will be held on the morning of July 4th. The bike parade begins at 9.15. Uh, and while there's a, a number of great um, celebrations in different wards in the township, the 8th wards is actually the best. Uh, um, so, <laughs> and I will not be emceeing that one. Um, <laughs> Um, also, a little update on the Brookline Park. Um, the demolition, demolition crew is slowly uh, making progress. Uh, they have recently regraded and hydro uh, seeded the area where the school was taken down. Um, they should be put, completing a temporary parking lot. We're hoping this work is done in the next month. At that time, most of the fencing will be taken down, although the fencing along um, Arlington Road will continue to stay up until um, the more plans for the park are completed. Um, we have actually taken steps um, on hiring a consultant to uh, work on the next phase in the park. Uh, ultimately, I think this will really be a, a jewel um, uh, for the township. It's going to be a really unique park, and we'll get a lot of community input on, on what goes there. Um, finally, I just wanted to follow up some on uh, Commissioner McCloskey's uh, comments. Um, Forty years ago, when I graduated from medical school, the leading cause of death in children under 18 was motor vehicle accidents. Um, over the last 40 years, thanks in large part to laws that increasing automobile safety, uh, further enforcement of DUIs, you know, mandating seatbelts, that rate has been cut in half. Unfortunately, over that same period, there has been a substantial increase in firearm-related injury in this age group. It is now the leading cause of death in children under 18. Surely, we can urge our legislatures to apply some of the same lessons that we've learned in improving automobile safety to 
um, reducing the incidence of firearm related deaths. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hart. Commissioner Wexler. Uh, well said, Commissioner Hart. I, I totally agree with that. That's, we've got to get these guns off the street and let's go after our state representatives. It's a state, we can do it at the state level as well. But the Hilltop Civic Association will have their July 4th parade, which is also the best in the township, on, uh, on the morning of July 4th. The, the bike, uh, I, I, I get to select the judges, so I, I, I'm smarter than being up there to judge it. So it starts at the uh, uh, Bonaire Fire Company, both the Bonaire and Manoa Fire Company, EMS, and, and our police department participate and lead the, lead the bike rides and the decorated bikes and all our walkers, and we typically honor two or three of our remaining veterans from World War II and the Korean War and Vietnam War. So it's a great day uh, and it, it's there. And as has already been said, stay safe. School buses are going off the road this week. That means all the bicycles and the walking kids are going, those thousand kids are going to our programs at all our municipal parks throughout all our neighborhoods. So slow down, uh, pay attention, the kids are there and let's keep, keep that car death of our children there, yeah, we can do it, and thanks to our police with enforcement, obey the stop sign laws. Uh, uh, that's just become a, every neighborhood is probably the biggest complaint we all face. People call us, people are blowing through the stop sign at everyone's corner. We don't have enough police officers to man the couple thousand stop signs that are probably in this township, but uh, please adhere to that and watch these kids coming. And we have a lot of parks that don't have sidewalks leading to them, so it's ultimately, it's a very dangerous situation, so. That's all I have. Thank you. Have a great 4th of July and a great summer. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wexler. Commissioner Trombetta. Thank you. Um, my ward and the 4th Ward also has some 4th of July events. Um, the Linwood Park Civic Association and Paddock Farm Civic Association both have 4th of July um, parades um, that you can participate in. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, I did attend the comprehensive plan meeting that was held this past Thursday. Um, I was heartened by maybe 35, 40 people in attendance, so I was glad to see that participation. However, I have to say that it largely came from one ward, the fifth ward, um, so I would love to see more participation from throughout the community. Um, this is important to all of us, that vision that uh, for the development and for um, what our township will look like. Um, so as Commissioner Cavender mentioned, June 23rd is the next planning commission meeting and I encourage folks to attend. Um, if they can't attend, they can submit their comments via email at promptplan at havehavtwp.org. Um, I should also mention that the township ha now has a dedicated page for the comprehensive plan so you can look at the draft plan um, and kind of see the history of the plan um, to really, you know, uh, get your grasp on it. Um, I also wanted to mention the Kelly, the Kelly Center. Uh, we are very fortunate to have that organization serving our community, and specifically they host a number of events in our community that um, are just really fantastic. Um, but specifically I want to mention that on June 25th, they are hosting the Irish Festival from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, I'm told we're the 33rd county. <laughs> um, I don't think that's official. Uh, we'll call it official. We'll call it official. You were just looking at Yeah, McCloskey. <laughs> McCloskey should come in on this, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, so I do encourage you to attend, um, but they also have a number of events going on this summer, so um, check out their website. Um, and finally, I just want to give a shout out to the township staff. Um, I could name names along this room right now, um, but those who even aren't present who, um, wow, are we fortunate to have a really fantastic township staff. When I've asked for somebody to check out overgrowth, Joe Celia comes in. Um, when I've asked for new signs, our, our police department has quickly um, helped to resolve the, those matters. Um, and of course, our township manager, thank you. Um, yesterday, we experienced another one of those days of extraordinary flooding. And uh, at 9 a.m., I got a phone call asking for help. By 9.15, <laughs> I think our staff were already on their way. So thank you. 
um, to everybody in this room and um, in our township who are working so hard to support and uh, provide service to our constituents. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Trombetta, and I agree. Uh, your praise of our Cracker Jack staff. Um, I just have three quick things. One, um, I, I want to herald um, a, a young man. Um, he is not a constituent here in Haverford Township, but he is close to somebody who's very important to us here in Haverford Township. And so I just want to call out a congratulations um, for Kyle Berman on becoming a bar mitzvah this weekend. So. Thank you. I do want to mention a constituent, and that is Louis DeBeckis to my left here, um, who got up earlier and very generously, very, very generously, gave credit to, uh, to me, uh, to Commissioner Wexler, um, and to others for the work that was done on the, um, on the Human Relations Act back in 2011. Um, and uh, I appreciate that you noted particularly the leadership of Commissioner Wexler, President Wexler at the time, and frankly, without his uh, leadership, uh, I'm not sure we would have gotten that uh, ordinance uh, through, and uh, they were dicey meetings, as you described. Uh, but you left out your role, Mr. DeVecus, and I want to I want to note it. Um, you attended uh, at Lower Marion its meeting, where it first evaluated and decided to pass 12-0 um, with two abstentions, the Human Relations Act in Lower Marion Township, which extended rights to the LBGT community. And you called me, and you said, I think we should do this in Haverford Township. And frankly, Louie, I didn't think there was a prayer that it would happen. Um, but I told you that if you got up and you said your story and you asked for it, that I would do anything I could to make that happen. Um, and you got up, you very bravely came forward and you spoke um, about your own experience, but more important, not that you wanted your own experience fixed or avenged, but that you didn't want your own experience repeated on others. And that resonated enough that we passed that ordinance four months later. I saw very few things happen in this township that quickly. That did. And it would be remiss if I did not acknowledge once again to the public your very important role in that happening. So thank you, Mr. DeBeckis. Uh, and I appreciate your... <laughs> we appreciate your coming out tonight. Um, Finally, um, the Uvalde massacre is, um, is something we've all been talking about and thinking about. And I, um, I've heard wonderful words from my colleagues and um, I remembered uh, something that I wrote and it's horrifying to think that I wrote this four years ago about another school massacre. And I wrote about my mom as a school teacher. I said, my mother was a school teacher who had her first job at age 20 in the Scranton School District. And at her wake, a man I'd never met came up to her and said he became a teacher because of her and that she was his hero. And in my life, I had numerous teachers who were my heroes. Mrs. Rogers, Sister Frances Rose, Mrs. Tricolo, Mrs. Sanford, Sister Augustus, Mr. Whalen, Mr. Vanston, Mr. Garland, Father Ruff, Ann Poulin. Few of the teachers who had a profound effect on me represent just a sliver of the millions of teachers who over the years have had life-changing roles in the hundreds of millions of lives. It was unusual though in the 21st, in the 20th century in America to consider the potential life-saving roles of teachers. But we grew up with stories of 19th century antebellum teachers risking their lives to teach slaves and their children how to read. Teachers hiding and saving students during the Holocaust. Teachers losing their lives in the Hungarian uprising or in 1968 in Czechoslovakia or in the killing fields in Cambodia. But in America, in peacetime, we counted on our teachers to guide our children, and we entrusted them with their well-being, and in rare instances, relied upon their training and selflessness to protect our children in natural disasters or other acts of God. But in the 21st century, in America, in peacetime, we have already lost track of the stories of the heroism of teachers who stand between students and madmen with guns, often sacrificing their lives to perform their final heroic act of a career of caring for our children. In peacetime, in the world's greatest democracy, our children are at greater risk than ever in our country's history of being the victims of gun violence in the one place we hold out as a haven from that their elementary or middle or high school. And why is that? The answer is simple 
the people we elect to office, to govern us, to lead us, to set examples for us, to form a more perfect union and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity have fundamentally failed at their jobs. They have sold their souls and their offices to an organization that no longer cares about gun safety and ownership and education and instead has become a naked shill for the weapons manufacturing industry. Throw them all out. Every last one of them, every Republican, every Democrat, every Independent, and every Green Party member who has ever accepted a donation from the NRA since Columbine. We have an election in November. One third of our Senate is up for election. One, the entire House of Representatives is up for re-election. Every state in the country will elect at least half of its representatives. Look at their voting record. Go on the NRA website. See who they approve of and throw them out. That's all I have. I will accept Unless anybody has anything else to say, I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. We're adjourned.